Welcome to The Whole Enchilada, a community of high achievers that fight the status quo, rebel against mediocrity, and make life happen. Let's go. Hey, Enchilada Nation. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, really excited about our conversation today. I've got a, a special guest and a good friend of mine on uh, with me today. And this is a, a normal um, visit of somebody coming on The Whole Enchilada. Joe and I are actually kicking off a series today. This is Joe Reardon, uh, a, a, again, a good friend of mine. We met a couple of years ago, kind of hit it off, and just our friendship has, has grown. At least on my side, I think we're friends, right, Joe? <laughs> yeah, it, well, okay, sure. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Mar Mar Marcus and I, yeah, Marcus, Marcus is the reason I joined KW, so, um, and I, I'm excited. We're really excited for to uh, kick this off, too, so. And Joe and I have, uh, uh, we are business uh, partners in the real estate world, but we've also done some business uh, together in investing and things like that. And just found that we have a very similar investing style. Uh, and that's why we're kicking off uh, an investment series. It's actually funny, I, Joe, I don't know if you remember this. One of our first uh, big business conversations, uh, you invited me to go on a hike with you. And I don't know uh, why you picked the steepest hike in all of Utah. <laughs> go on but we're trying to have this business conversation and it's like <sighs> two words then breathe yeah, some was, more yes that, that, that's true that is, i do remember that and well it's funny dude, because because marcus is telling you you're telling me like how you know you did this like navy seal training i'm like oh man so i gotta monkey let's do the cherry canyon logging trail in draper which is literally you feel like you're like you know walking straight up a mountain and you get to a point where at a certain point you're taking like it's like one breath every two steps like yeah like, <laughs> yeah it was it was but it was fun yeah it was fun but the, the conversation could have been uh a lot more words so uh recently joe and i kind of pulled some of these ideas together we meet regularly and talk about wealth building and investing but uh we wanted to open this conversation up one of the things that surprises me joe and you've probably seen this too being a successful entrepreneur yourself is as i get a lot of people approach me asking me, what, what should I invest in right now? Where should I be investing my money? Um, and, and I actually really love those, those conversations. Um, in fact, it's one of my favorite conversations about investing and how to make your money grow. But one of the things that, that always gets me in those conversations is generally the advice I give to some of these agents is not necessarily what they want to hear uh, because they want to know what that next, next trick is or that next big thing. And a lot of times you have to start a wealth building conversation with the foundational pieces of wealth, which are not the fun, exciting, glittery, shiny pieces of wealth building that everyone wants to talk about. And I think that's one of the reasons a lot of people don't ever get on this journey of wealth building. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I believe, um, you, you'll see, yeah, it's the same thing. Like, you know, I remember, you know, talking to other agents when I was trying to grow my agent business and you're just like, tell me the secret right? And, and the secret is, th there's no secret. It's a process, right? It's a process. And, and, and everyone, the better, you know, the more you go through that process or submit to the process, the hopefully the quicker you can get there, but you have to understand that that's what's going on. You're on a journey. And I think yes. you and I are, are, are on that journey. We're always going to be on that journey. And that's the great thing about learning, whether it's investing, real estate, you know, um, anything, I think in life, um, we're never finished. And so, but yeah, you have to start that journey. I think the best way to start that journey was, was with foundations. Yep. Love it. So one of the things we, so we met with a, a small group of really brilliant entrepreneurs earlier this week and started this conversation. And Joe and I wanted to do a recap of that conversation. Joe, we started that conversation a few days ago with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, which you brought to the table. Uh, why don't you kick us off? Okay. So I don't know. So yeah, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I don't know if you guys remember, I was introduced to this, I think in about ninth grade, my freshman year of high school. And, that, and I remember- makes looking, That makes sense because he turned this out in 1943. That's about when you were in ninth grade, right? Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Wow. I had to take it. I, you said you queued it up. I had to take the shot. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, we're, we're, we're going to, yeah, we're going to try to keep the uh, personal insults down to a minimum here. Um, <laughs> But yes, uh, yes, it must have been sometime after 1943. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, this 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 pyramid basically has has five levels to it, and and the there's there's so starting from the bottom is physiological needs. You know, your food, um, water, shelter. Uh, then you have safety needs, right? Health, um, employment, and you know, property. And then 
Above that is where you get into um, more like the psychological needs where love belonging, so family, friends, relationships. And above that is esteem, self-esteem, respect, and recognition. And then the top one is, is self-actualization, uh, which is make it basically reaching your full potential. And we wanted to talk about that because it's gonna lead into something in a second, but it was interesting as we had the conversation, everyone, as they kind of looked at this, as a, at this uh, uh, hierarchy or this pyramid, um, you know, it's like you kind of need these other foundations in order to get to the next level. It was Maslow's point. And, um, and so the interesting thing is we all looked at it and we realized we, most of us had been exposed to this earlier on in our, in our uh, you know, childhood and actually, and, and then we thought about it very different today. And I, I think that was one of the things that was struck everyone about that. So if you want to. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think that's exactly right. And for those of you that haven't actually seen the visual chart of this, you can, you can look it up online, but it's, it is a, a hierarchy, right? The, it, based on this, that the idea is psychological needs have to be met before you can move into to safety needs, then love needs, then esteem needs. But, and interesting, I did bring up this actually, I, I did some research on it after our conversation. This was uh, in, uh, introduced in 1943. And I think the, the world was so different in 1943. They, the way they approached things and, and the view of the world was different at that time. Not that the hierarchy has changed with where we are now, but the world around us has changed. And, and one of the big ahas I had in our conversation, Joe, and I made this comment with the group is as I looked at this, you know, particularly in a first world problem here, uh, I think a lot of us grew up in a world where we never, we, we ne didn't necessarily wake up thinking, oh, what am I going to eat today? Where am I going to find clean water? Where am I going to sleep? So I think a lot of us have taken advantage of like the psych uh, psychological, or excuse me, physiological needs, this uh, safety needs, even, even in some respects, those love needs have kind of just been a given for a lot of us growing up and granted in, in different levels. But one of the biggest plagues I think I, that's working against future wealth for people right now is I think so many financial decisions are made purely based off that esteem line in the hierarchy. What, what, what shoes are other people wearing? Um, how am I expected to show up? What car am I expected to drive? Or so-and-so down my street has a boat, so I have to have a boat. And I really think that line right there is too many people are jumping ahead to that esteem recognition piece and it's really plaguing their, their opportunity for future wealth. Yeah, the, the, the idea of keeping up with the Joneses, um, I, mean, I, w I mean, we see that a lot in Utah. I mean, I, I live in Draper, and a lot of jokes are made about Draper and stuff. Like, um, but yeah, you definitely see that where you, it is a thing where um, people have a lot of fancy cars. They have a lot of uh, things that are maybe those outward signs of wealth, right? Yeah. Um, but I think one of our things that we, you know, based upon that, what we transition to is, is talking about what, what is really wealth, right? And keeping up the Joneses is some of those things that can keep you actually from uh, understanding maybe uh, what wealth is and then actually how to achieve wealth. Yeah. Does that make sense? I think that's kind of what we- hundred percent. So I'm excited to move into this next piece of the conversation because again, there, there's nothing wrong with having those things, right? And if you, if you- no. So it came to my house, you'd see that I have some of those things. It's, it's delayed gratification, right? Not putting yourself yes. in a worse financial situation by buying that depreciating asset. It's, it's the work you've done over the last several years that set that up in a way that that, that is the reward that doesn't inhibit your, your continued financial and wealth building uh, journey, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so, what, you know, one of the things that I think we have to understand is when we, in order to kind of get out of that mindset and that that thing where we're just trying to do it because we're like, oh, we need to, I need this toy or whatever is to understand some of our relationships about money, right? And so yes. I think that's one of the, the key pieces here and, and how that's shaped. Our relationships with money are shaped by so many things, right? They're shaped by our upbringing. They're shaped by our family. They're shaped by the people we've, you know, uh, spent time with. Um, and, and because of that, how we think about money really has a huge effect on what we may do, may or may not do in terms of uh, creating wealth and going there. So, um, you know, we talked about 
those, all those feelings that people have regarding that. And some of those things are strong and some of those things are, are, are kind of cemented in our culture to some degree, right? And, and so understanding that and being able to assess where you are with your relationship with money and what that means and understanding that you may need to, to look inside yourself about some of those things and understand how you can move forward maybe in a more positive way um, and I think that was a topic that, that we took some time with. And yeah. I, I think it's really, truly important for us to discuss quickly here. Yeah, I, I think so too. If, if, if we don't understand our personal relationship with money, then we can't lean on the strong parts of that relationship or fix the, the difficult or, or wrong thinking around that relationship, right? I, one of my, uh, a book called Fierce Conversations, one of my favorite things out of there, it says conversation equals relationship. And obviously it's talking about personal relationships there, like the, the, the level you get with any relationship equals the level of conversation you're able to have with that person. I think that that applies here with money is, is the more we talk about, the way we talk about money and the way we think about money is, go, is probably in direct relation to how much money we're gonna end up having on our, on our net worth sheet, if that makes sense. Yes, yeah, I mean, I, I think, um... A lot of people don't want to even talk about money, right? There's in some families that's a taboo, um, and um, and and when we, and you, as you work, move kind of forward in in, in wealth building, um, you're going to have to have those conversations. You know, you're going to have to have the conversations with yourself. You're going to have to have the conversations with with your family, meaning your your spouse, right? And those things, all those things are important in this journey. Um, and uh, making sure that you, where you are in that process. Um, I, I think uh, the, the idea too, like you have, to t you have to talk to your spouse, you have to get on the same page and that, that can be a process as well because that person has completely different sets of family upbringing experiences that they bring to the table from that side. And we know that with a lot of couples that can be a challenge. And that's, and that's a lot of times um, we know that can be a big thing in relationships. So I think the other thing we talked about is, is starting that process uh, with your spouse and, 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 and really trying to move forward in that, but starting that slow and um, not trying going from zero to a hundred maybe. Right. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It's, it's number one is we have to understand what is our personal relationship with money? What are, what are some of the the things I've been trained to think growing up around credit card debt, around investing, around uh, how long to stay in your house, around uh, increasing my income, like really understanding that relationship. And then on the other side of that, it's, it's getting clarity on, okay, what, what does wealthy mean to me? Is that uh, Bill Gates type of money? Or is that, a, a, you know, $5 million in the bank, whatever, whatever that wealth, it's, there's no right or wrong. The only wrong is if you haven't taken the time to think about what does wealth mean for you. And then to your point, Joe, it's, it's, if it's, what, what does that, what does that wealth need to look like for the, for you and the key relationships you have in the future, right? A perfect example of this is, is, you know, I kind of my dream life of retirement is living on a catamaran in the Bahamas. And, and spending all day by myself out there with, in island hopping. Well, I learned pretty quickly in uh, one of my walks with my wife, we tend to go on these long walks where we talk about the future and things going on and the kids, is I learned very quickly that while sailing sounds fun to her, living on a sailboat a world away from her future grandkids uh, was, was, not, it was not in the cards. And so we had to start, I had to start thinking, oh, it's not about just what, what wealth I need to have to pro provide my future, it's our future. So with, yeah. if we're not having those conversations, we can't get clarity on where we're going. Well, you know, it's so funny you're saying that. I'm, I am laughing so hard because, um, you know, a lot of people go on cruises. And my wife one day just looked at me and she says, just so you know, I don't ever, ever, ever want to go on any cruise. <laughs> like, are we clear? I'm like, I guess we are now. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, so, you know, so I think that's also a good jumping off point. Um, what we talked about to go, let's talk about then what it means, you know, what wealth is. I mean, in a sense, wealth is you want to have the ability to finance the material foundation necessary for you to achieve your purpose in life. Now, let me say that one more time. The, basically, the ability to finance the material, material foundation 
So I screw it up. Necessary for you to achieve your purpose in life. Now, the key thing, there's a couple key things in there. Material foundation, necessary for you and to achieve your purpose. Now, that makes it personal, right? It's for you. It's not about what, what Marcus thinks is necessary and, and, you know, or what he wants for that found, foundation and, and then also, or me, and then also purpose, right? Why are you doing this? To what end? And so I think that is a, a super important thing to think about because otherwise you just get into this trap where you're like, oh, what, why am I doing I'm just for some reason or, or whatever that is. And there could be tons and tons of different reasons that are personal to people. And so I think that's the next thing is really getting clear in yourself what is necessary for you and why you're doing it to achieve your purpose, right? And I think that that's, that's, that's one of the key things to think about here and, and to have come be clear with. Yeah, I think so too. I think we have to get clarity on, on the why behind it. Why am I doing this? Is it that I want to make sure my kids uh, go to college? Is it uh, that I uh, want to make sure that if, if one of my uh, grandkids, uh, God forbid, is, is born with a, a, a life-threatening disease or something like that, that uh, I want to be able to step in and help. Whatever that purpose is, we have to have clarity on what that is and what impact we have on the world. And then going back to a, a Tony Robbins trick is then tying a positive emotion to how will it make you feel if you create that for your legacy? How will you feel if in the event someone in your, in your family or outside your family needs that help and you're able to step in and help without, without uh, really having a huge negative impact on your, on your wealth? So tying that positive emotion to it and then turning around and saying, okay, well, how am I going to feel when I'm 65 and, I, and, I, and I'm greeting people at Walmart because I, didn't, I wasn't financially sound with my money? in my thirties and forties, right? Then creating that negative right. emotion. To, so you're, you're creating that positive. I want to experience that pot of positive emotion in the future. And that's going to be your driver to figure out these money rules, which we'll talk about in a future episode. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I, I think, um, and, you know, I'm going to tie this back now to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? And this is actually, this next definition is actually courtesy of Gary Keller. And I, I think this is amazing. Um, and it really makes you think about, you know, what that is. So Gary, Gary says, a wealthy person has accumulated the wealth that delivers the passive income to allow somebody to self-actualize and achieve their personal life mission. One more time, a wealthy person has accumulated the wealth that delivers the passive income to allow somebody to self-actualize and achieve their personal life mission. Right. So that means if you go back to Maslow's hierarchy, self-actualization is the is the top of that pyramid, which means reaching your full potential. Right. And so in a sense, what, you know, Gary said in a, in one of his podcasts, which I thought was great. And it's like he's like, you understand now I've kind of boxed you in here. Right. He said, I've boxed you in because. You, you know, you need to understand what your personal life mission is. What is your purpose? Truly, why are you doing this? Because uh, the other thing that he talked about, too, is that if you don't do that, then it just becomes this crazy race, crazy, you know, a rich guy race or something. And, and you, you do see sometimes people that get that and they just it's just more, 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 more instead of understanding I'm doing this for a purpose. This is why, why I'm doing it and, and allowing us to actually then feel fulfilled at the point in time when we do reach these goals or we do reach these things. And what you said with Tony Robbins is, is absolutely true. Tethering the feelings to, Hey, what I'm accomplishing something. Right. And then what do I, what will happen if I don't accomplish that? And I, I think that's really true. And one of the, th one of that, that's a part of it too, where we have to understand, um, you know, wealth building for us is, as you know, in a sense, we're real estate agents. Right. And, we don't have pensions, you know, we don't have 401ks, we may have IRAs, but it's our ability to really lay the foundation and look for what we're going to need in the future, what, what we like build our life, design our life. That's what we talk about in Boulder Keller Williams, right? <laughs> life by design. And that's a, that's a very, um, those aren't just words. That's, that's something that you, if people take to heart and understand that, and then the other thing is you have to be able to look forward and into the future 
and understand what that might look like for yourself and be very, um, be very honest with yourself, right? Be very honest with yourself about what that might take, what you're looking to accomplish. And I think a lot of people have anxiety around that. Just thinking about that freaks them out. Uh, and I think part of our goal is to get people to start looking at that. Let's take some steps, move towards that on that path. And, you know, uh, Warren Buffett talks about getting the snowball running, rolling, right? Or we talk about in, in real estate, how we get, you know, get momentum, right? Once you get momentum, it's, you start down that path, it's just easier to keep that momentum going. And so that's one of the things here. It's in terms of creating the life you want, understanding what that takes, figuring out your purpose, your mission, and then, and then working backwards to, towards those steps. Yeah. And if, if we don't have clarity on, on what we're trying to accomplish, then we can't, we can't match a number to it. Right. A lot of people, I, I think if we sat down and met with a lot of entrepreneurs, I think all of their hearts, the majority of their hearts are in a really good spot. What, what do you want, what, what do you want to do when you're older? Well, I want, I'm going to be retired. I'm going to have all these things. I'm going to give away all this money. I'm going to participate in this, in this, these charities. Okay. Well, how much money do you need to make that happen? Well, I don't know. So I think that first step is, what does that look like? What do I want my life to look like in that moment? What do I need to fulfill my life mission? And then, and then attaching a number to it is, I need to be making X and in passive income annually to fund that life mission. Um, and, and then you can take it a step further to say, okay, for me to be making X in passive income, how much net worth do I have to have working for me at what percent to generate that passive income annually for me. So that next step of the journey is to say, okay, now that I have a clarity on what I want in the future, what is that freedom number? Exactly. And that, and obviously that's personal for everyone. You have to move toward that and, and figure that out. And you, and you, you have to understand what that looks like at the end of the journey. So I think that's the, the really what this is all about. And then the, one of the other things I wanted to drop on here, because we talked about this inside, but, about us thinking about ourselves and, and this inner game, right? Um, and this is another tidbit from Gary that I thought was, was great. You know, success and wealth are inside to outside. They're the outward manifestation of an inner focus. Therefore, success and wealth are a state of mind, right? And so I think the whole thing we're trying to get at right here in this, in this, um, in this conversation is, encouraging you to, to look inward, to understand what your relationships are about money, how you're going to uh, figure out your life mission if you don't, or your purpose, how that's going to be financed, move towards a freedom number, right? What we talked about. And, and then be able to take, start taking some action steps to, to get you there. And uh, I think those are the, the things that I think that they can propel you along this journey, right? And I think, um, and a lot of people don't necessarily do that at the beginning. And those things may change for you too. Nothing to say they have to be set in stone, but this is a, it's a great way to start the journey is to kind of set yourself up psychologically in a positive mindset, a positive framework that allow you to move ahead. All right, I think that that's a great wrap up uh, for, for this meeting. Um, cause we're going to move into some specific strategies. I think in the next conversation, we'll, we'll talk through, uh, several steps to start building out that foundation of what does that emergency fund look like? How to, how to set up some, uh, some, your mind around saving for taxes, things like that. So if you're all right with Joe, we'll, we'll jump in onto that piece in the next episode. Cause I think, great. I think you nailed that summary there at the end of, of we have to understand the relationship with money. That's where we need to understand what that looks like first. We need to understand what's working well. What, what do we need to change? We need to get clarity on what does the future, my future wealth look like to fund my personal life? What, what, what do I want in the future? And those important relationships that are going to be there with me. And then attaching a freedom number to that. So now in the follow up, following up episodes, if we have clarity around that, we can get into strategies. How do we make that happen? The, the last thing that I'll say to, to kind of hit this home, and I want our, our listeners to know this, is nobody, nobody is responsible for your wealth and future financial freedom but you. It's too easy to blame the market, too easy to blame that friend of yours that got an inheritance or whatever it is, and it was easy for them. 
that friend of yours that got the easy promotion because their uncle owned the company. Like, don't fall into that trap of blaming other people while why your financial situation is not ideal. Commit to that journey today. And nobody ha will have that determiner, whether you're financially free in the future, but you. And we're, we're excited to go on this journey with you. Any last comments from you, Joe? No, I, I love that. I love that. I mean, um, that is absolutely true. In a sense, taking that personal responsibility. Um, and the great thing is, once you do that, um, and you understand that, and you no longer make it about other people, you make it about yourself, and how you're doing that, and what you're doing for your family, and how you're doing those things, then it really, um, it really opens you up to some fulfilling, uh, makes you feel fulfilled when you actually start accomplishing some things. Even if they're just baby steps, it means you are actually taking responsibility. And it's just that growth. You can see it when you first start learning to sell real estate. It's the same type of thing, but just in this different venue. So I think it's a great wrap up. I'm excited to continue. Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, proud to have you part of the, the Enchilada Nation. Uh, please go and subscribe to our, our podcast channel on your favorite podcast player. Also feel free to go to thewholeenchilada.biz and subscribe there. And if you have any of your friends or acquaintances that should be on this journey with us, please make that invitation. Uh, the more of us that we pull together that are on the same journey, the more powerful this journey is going to be for all of us. And don't forget, go live life on your terms. Thanks everybody.